We are being asked to reflect on time that is dripping away from all of us. We can get lost in the technicalities and the grammatical analysis and the quotes of the Mufassirun, but let's think about how this applies to us. You and I have 24 hours in a day. How many of them are gone in sleep? How many of them are gone in work? How many of them are put into efforts for, to build our savings, dunya savings, pay the bills, but how much of it is being prepared for, so we can pay our bills in the akhirah? How much of it is going so that we can actually be ready to stand before Allah Azza wa Jal for that audit? There's the audit in tax season, then there's the ultimate audit that's coming. In which we all have to stand for every single thing that we've done. These, you know, if I, I say this all the time. One of the benefits of this surah and using the word asr, because it's part of a day, is Allah is making us imagine our entire life as though it is how many? One day. That it's one day. If you can transform how you spend one day, basically you have transformed your life. Because you know, you know this already. Many of you work full time, or are students full time, or you know, do you take care of the home full time? A lot of your days are exactly the same. There's a lot of routine. It's the same exact thing over and over and over again. So if you can bring a change to one part of your day, you've actually transformed one part of your entire life. You've transformed an entire part of your life. And that the time to make that change is running out. And my personal advice to you, this is not part of tafsir, just personal advice, we make changes to ourselves in Ramadan. We make those changes. We make changes for Eid. We make changes, or we, you know, break from our schedule on special occasions, at the death of a family member. You know, we make changes on the, the, these kinds of special occasions, at the birth of a child, etc., etc. But then we go back to the routine. We go back to our old ways. Why do we go back to our old ways? Because we don't see the sense of urgency. You see, you don't say, man, I used to go to work at, on time at 9 o'clock. And I was doing that for a while, but then I just, you know, I got lazy and you know, now I go at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. You won't do that because you know you're going to get fired. You know there's a sense of urgency, you have to be there. And the fact that you have convinced yourself that there's an absolute sense of urgency, you have no choice but to be there on time every day, you have no choice in the matter, it automatically made your consistency easy for you. It didn't make it hard anymore. You just have to do it, you don't think twice about it. Somebody says to you, how do you do it man? I just gotta do it. I don't think about it, I just do it. That's it. Now if we really, really believed, like we believe our, we will lose our job when we don't show up on time, right? If we really, really believed that we are heading for loss, and there are certain behaviors that need to enter into our life, like the regularity of salah, for example, like the abandonment of vain activity, for example, if we were really convinced that not changing our behavior will lead us to loss, like the loss of a job, right? Like, you know, nobody's gonna be late for their immigration appointment. They're gonna be there two hours early. Right? They're gonna prepare the night, they have Qiyam al-Layl the night before, because it's at 6 a.m., so they won't go to sleep. They'll be there early. Because they are convinced this has to do with, if they don't do this, they will be in loss. If we are truly convinced this will lead to loss, then changing one day, rather changing your whole life becomes very easy. But when does it become easy? When there is belief. Which is why when Allah talked about khusr, what's the first exception He mentioned? Those who what? They believe. It is not just casually, oh those who believe, yeah, I'm included. No, no, no. This is not the kind of belief we're talking about here. This is real deep conviction that what I am doing is directly connected to my success, directly connected to my failure. I better change my ways. I better get my act together. This is, this is just in the word al-asr itself. Just in the word, how it's being squeezed and drenched away. And I don't have time. The students, those of you that are students here, you have an assignment due. And you forgot to do it. There's time running out. Right? The kind of urgency you will see in a student. The kind of urgency to study for the exam before the final. The kind of urgency you will see for an accountant in tax season. The kind of urgency you will see, for example, if you're late to work. The kind of behavior you will have at home. Things will be upside down. You better not be late. You're gonna turn the whole house up. Nothing matters at that time. You won't care about breakfast or this or that or the other. You will go. Because there's a sense of urgency. You are convinced you will be in trouble if you don't do it. You're absolutely convinced. We have to compare that conviction to our conviction in, in terms of our deen. And our conviction, you know, if your boss says to you, I swear to you, you are in trouble. 
If your boss says that to you, he says, I swear, he comes into the office, he doesn't point at you, he says, every single employee is in trouble. I swear. Every single one. They're gonna, they're gonna lose big. When he walks away, do you think any of the employees are ah, not me, <laughs> I'm okay. Nope. He didn't specify, right? He didn't say some people are in trouble. He didn't say, that guy over there is in trouble. What did he say? Every single one. You're all in trouble. And you're gonna find out pretty soon, time's running out. There's a deadline, you're, you're gonna find out very very soon. Who, you know, how much trouble you're really in. Now when you hear that, in dunya, there's a sense of urgency. There's, oh my God, what am I, what am I supposed to do? What does he want? Why is he angry? What, what, is it something we're not doing? Now think about this. When you get a job, and I'm giving you these examples so we understand the rest of the surah well, inshaAllah ta'ala. This is a critical surah for the life of a Muslim. It is such a gift from Allah that He gave us three ayat that can change our life. You don't have to memorize Qur'an to change your life. Just remember Surah Al-Asr, man, subhanAllah, how it will transform your life. How it will transform your life. Now, now think about this. You get a job. Your boss says to you, you got four tasks. Every day, you have how many? Four tasks. Sometimes your boss gives you tasks that you're really good at. And sometimes you have tasks that you don't like doing. But because this is your job, how many tasks do you have to do? All four. You only like two of them, but you still have to do four. Two of them you enjoy doing, two of them you don't enjoy doing, but you still do four. Now if some of, the, some of you decide, or I decide, I'm just gonna do two of those. Because I'm really good at those two. I'm not gonna even touch the other two, I'm not worried about that. He'll be okay. When he sees how impressive my first two are, he'll forget about the other two. So you don't do your other two tasks. And the boss comes after a week, so what's, uh, what's the story? Where, where are you on the progress? I finished the first two 100%. Oh, what about the other? Actually, I, um, I'm not gonna do those. But see how good I did the first two. What's gonna happen to this person? What do you think is gonna happen? He's gonna keep his job? No. Even if you did not, a, not the best job, but at least you did your best to, for all four. You didn't get 100%. You got a 70% for all four. That's better than you getting 100% for one of them. You understand? So when Allah sets out four conditions, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ And we say, mm, Iman, yeah, we should work on our Iman. Some good deeds. And you say, ah, this other stuff, this is for speakers. This is for da'i, this is for the shaykh, this is for somebody, this is not for me. This is for somebody else. Then what are you doing? You're saying, Allah says, those, everyone's in trouble except people who meet four conditions, but you're only interested in two, or one, or three, or whatever. You're picking and choosing, that is also in loss. It's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. That's the attitude we have to develop in regards to this surah. Let's get to inna al-insana lafi First of all, the word inna. Inna is used in the Arabic language. Uh, not just to mean certainly, but to talk to a group of people that are in doubt about what you are saying. By using the word inna in inna al-insana lafi khusr, we are already learning that most human beings, when they hear this, guess what? They don't believe it. They don't believe it's that, it's that bad. It can't be that bad, bro. That's a pretty depressing lecture you gave. <laughs> It can't be that bad. And Allah is making sure you understand, for sure this is the case. The word insan, we've talked about this before because it's come up many times in different surahs. In, the word insan comes from different roots, it's argued. One of them is nisyan, forgetfulness. And part of that is the human being can be reminded that he's in really, really deep trouble, but what happens soon after? He forgets. You hear a khutbah, you get reminded, you remember and you say, man, seriously, I gotta get my act together. And then you, by the time you get to the car in the parking lot of the masjid, you've already forgotten. Insan. Human beings, Allah gave him a covenant before he even came to this earth. Alastu bi rabbikum, qalu bala shahidna in Surah Al-A'raf. He said, am I not your master? We said, yes, of course you are. We bear witness. We bore witness to Allah that He's our master when we came to this earth. Guess what happened? We forgot. We forgot. We forget the seriousness of saying La ilaha illallah. We forget the power of saying Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We forget. So the word insan, as opposed to al-fard, the individual, al-nafs, the person. There are different words that are alternatives. Al-bashar, 
the, the you know people and nas but an insan here two benefits of it one to allude to our forgetfulness and two the word insan is individual it's called ism lil jins the benefit of knowing that is this word includes two things it includes all categories meaning all human beings and at the same time it's singular and here we have to learn something this is the last thing we'll share for today inshallah ta'ala just a little bit about the word insan is the concept of the diffusion of responsibility this is a concept in psychology it's called diffusion of responsibility all of you are here uh, let, let me give you a classroom example or a home example my kids are at home i have five kids alhamdulillah they're home they're running around as i'm leaving the the house i say to them be good and i close the door i just say be good are they going to be good no this is what you call diffusion of responsibility but if i open the door and i say husna don't bother your sister waliya don't draw on the wall huda don't yell imad go to sleep or if i specify then are they going to be more responsible yes if i say generally then what happens it must be talking about someone else i'm already good you understand the teacher says in the classroom the, the kids are making lots of noise the teacher says be quiet everyone does it work but the teacher takes one student and makes an example out of them everybody's making noise this is by the way for teachers this is a good tip okay everybody's making noise you sing a lot one student kareem you want to keep talking just one guess what's going to happen to everybody else everybody chills out why you specify there's no more diffusion of responsibility it, it didn't get di- you know divided up and a lot of times when people are given a responsibility they start assuming yeah it's important but there's always someone else who can do it right yeah there's trouble you know the t- the teacher walks in you know you guys are in big trouble but the teacher says you guys are in big trouble not that scary i pick on kareem again kareem you don't know how much trouble you're in is that far more scarier for kareem it is isn't it now to say inna nasa lafi khusr people are in trouble people are in loss that's one thing inna insana each and every single individual forgetful human being is immersed in a state of loss so when the human being hears this ayah who is he to think about himself forget everybody else assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah If you enjoyed this video please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos click on the box at the bottom and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.